previously on Friday Night Titans. Like I'm talking about the movie trivia schmodown draft 2021. And I want Amaru Moses on the usual suspects to win that inner geekdom belt. This next pick is the first pick of the second round, and he's also going to be the first person to take the belt away from Chandru. And his name is Saul. It's now time for that inner geekdom number one contender yeah. match. You've got Amaru Moses, the number two overall draft pick picked up by Sam Levine and the usual suspects, and he is going up against Saul. It has been the Saul show in his last two matches. Batman returns. And your winner! Ah! By way of Tecnodonga! Ah! Amaru ah! Moses! Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to announce that the newest member of SWAG is the silent assassin, Amaru Moses, about to part the Red Sea of the IG, baby. You don't even know. This year, my second announcement is gonna be, we are gonna, we are gonna. Have, you're gonna have, you're gonna have. <laughs> We're gonna have. Saul, let me guess, Saul? Saul, is it gonna be Saul? Is that, is that? The big surprise. I dare you to interrupt me again. I dare you. Do you like your kneecaps? Because if you don't, interrupt me again. Yes, yeah, Saul. Saul. It's going to be Saul. Do you have an aversion to winners? Is that the problem here? You don't like being around people that actually win? Because that's what the Den's doing this year, OK? And we can do that with or without you. And right now, I'm feeling like maybe we need to do this without you. No, I need you. And that's why I should. Yeah! We gotta find a number one contender to play against Kevin Smith. So obviously, that's okay. gonna be the number one contender match. So we gotta find someone first for you to play to get to that match. And I got an opponent. Who is it? Mara Kanopic was my choice. And Mara is not available at the moment. Okay. Robert Parker. Can't travel here right now. So we couldn't get him. But I do have someone else in mind. Who do you have? The semifinalist for last year's Inner Geekdom Tournament, the Saul Show. Saul, however, he needs to accept. Saul, what say you, my friend? I think it would be the right thing to do. I'll see you next week. I know. It was a good run, Kaiser. I love playing with you, and you're one of my best friends in the world. But Dan and I, we kind of, we talked and we agreed. I think it's just, I think ben, it's time ben, we ben, go. Ben, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. You haven't even heard me out yet. What if I told you I had a deal in place that could bring you and Merle back to the dungeon? All you got to do is play one match. Your boss, my boss, he's everybody's boss. Good to see you, brother. I mean, it's look. always good to see. It's always oh, good to see. You, oh, man. always, especially on uh, you know on a day when we can put together a contract, put everything on the dotted line, bring you in, uh, Dan guys. Are we we we, 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 we have to, we have and... to decline. What? Yeah. Look, I I talked to Dan. Whoa. I, hey, like just hang on, hey, 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 Ka Kaiser. I talked to Dan. I'm gonna focus on singles. Dan's doing his own thing, and I really appreciate you putting this deal together, but. I, I don't want you to take this the wrong way. I, I, I've been talking Wait, to talk another manager. You've been what? I've been talking to another manager, man. And uh, unfortunately, it's a great deal, but I got to go. Ben, wait, yeah. Talking to another manager. Is, is there anyone else that you could share that, that's coming to the den this year, which I'm sure going to have a fantastic year? Uh, anybody else can be joining you this, this season? I'm bringing in Ben, the boss, Bateman. Ben Bateman, the boss from the dungeon. The Bye, ben Bateman. Frankie. Snatch. Hey, Help him out. Build the den. Become a champion. Get both those belts. Get on Rushmore. And the only way you can do that is by building other people up around you, right? 
You can't do it on your own. It's, I feel like there's a way that we're doing things. And I know I came to you in the off season. I don't know if it's totally what I want to be doing. I think the den maybe wants to look a little different than that, you know? Okay, okay. I mean, listen, I will say like part of what was good about bringing you on is I felt like we had a very clear direction, but like, yeah, listen, if you want, if you think this should go a different direction, I'm, you're the compass. I mean, I, I just, follow. I feel like it was a good time, like talking smack and having a good time with those guys, Lomas and Radis, but like, that's new talent. You wanna yeah. bring people up. You don't yeah, wanna yeah, yeah, push yeah, yeah. people down, you know? It's like, come on, I feel like I'm an elder statesman. I've been at this a long time, you know? Yeah. I got a lot of experience. So, yeah. I play and you play. Each have a different partner, you just find somebody. I have a patron, okay? Literally a patron of mine. Somebody who is an exhibition guy, he's gonna be my partner. So you play with anybody. But like somebody you want to help, you know what I mean? Yeah. So somebody that he wants to get into the league, elevate, give some, you know, visibility to. It's probably better if you guys win, because afterwards, no matter what, you and I team up, and we're the new face, the team of the den. You're back on the den. I'm back on the den. Survive! PG! Can I talk to you for a second? Survivor's got time. All right. Now, it was great meeting you at the free-for-all, and I've been watching what you've been doing in the FCL. Yeah. And you're aware of the proposition I've been given by the den, right? Survivor's aware? I think you and me should team up for that. We're gonna be a tag team? Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity for you to make your mark in this league. You get to play Ben Bateman. And I get to fight Bateman! Yeah. Survivor's in. Yeah, I... I think it's gonna be a great opportunity. The whole angle of the den this season, what I've been told, is that we're gonna to try to showcase new and upcoming talent. Okay. So I think it's the perfect place for you to debut. Survivor's all about showing off. All right, so should we do this? Absolutely. All right. Let's, Let's have a match. Ready. Let's do it. All right. It's the Schmodown, the world championship of movie trivia. This is Friday Night Titans. I was legitimately gonna drink it later. Okay, oh, okay, Zen. Hey, hi. Can I get hi, a few friend. words if I can? Of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, a lot's been going on here in the past yeah. few weeks. Yeah. Uh, seems to be a bit of a change of heart from the viciousness we saw at Spectacular. Yeah. Kate, can you help us with you know what's going on here? First of all, hi. You look really good. Thank you. Um. Yeah. Listen, Shannon's not the only one that's allowed to have a change of heart. I've had one too. Um, been at a talk with me, and we're just thinking about going a different direction. Okay. Okay. Well, Ben, you know, um, you played really great against Radis. You know, you played well with Andrew, mm -hmm. uh, but now you're doing something a little more unconventional. Sure. Uh, teaming yeah, up yeah, with yeah. with Peggy uh, after you faced each other first. You know, can you help us understand what's going on here? I mean, you know, I, I remember when I came in the league and I remember feeling like I was looking around at all these great players and I wanted those accolades and I really wanted that, whatever, fame, I guess you'd call it. And I was impressed with a lot of the rookies last year. You know, I know what that was like and they, they impressed me. They did a good job. So whether it was Newman or like Radis, Peggy especially, or Paige who beat me, let's be honest. Um, I just feel like an opportunity to play with somebody of that caliber. I wanted to have a good time, spotlight the rookies, and then give it a shot on the den. And Peggy's a special player, so I'm, I'm really excited about that. Yeah, I, I have to say, I had the best experience with Peggy last year. I love her. She actually made me this tie-dye shirt, which is why I'm wearing it. Um, she means a lot to me, and it means a lot for me to be able to get her back. So this is the plan to do it. Yeah, now, Ben, I'm curious about you know your partner, because we know what's happening with Peggy. She's taking the survivor. Yeah. 
Um, but really no word on yours yet. Uh, I kind of understand it's a patron of yours. He's a patron and he's a terrific guy. I mean, like really, really hard worker. He's helped me a lot. He's, he's a little he's, shy. Yeah, but he's yeah. done really well when it comes yeah. to trivia. Like in the study sessions, he's even beaten me before in the study sessions. Uh, you know, Patreon matches, the you know Comic-Con matches we all know about. So for me, getting a chance to play with somebody of that caliber on a night that I'm just looking to have fun, I think it's gonna be a great time. And I think the audience is gonna love it. You know, I mean, it doesn't say much, but the guy is a beast. Yeah. So okay, so uh, it helps you like bring someone. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, hey, out. there's yeah. uh, Saul. Saul, hey. <gasps> oh, you... hi, Solly. Oh, you look all dolled up. That's nice for once. Hmm. I heard about what you're doing with Peggy. Yeah. yeah. Is this real? Is this legit? Yeah, 100%. Of course it is. What do you. Of course it is. You do right by Peggy, and this changes things, and then this happens, we can talk. Absolutely. Of course. Door's open. Yeah, it's fine. I don't know what he is going on. Oh, wow. Um, seems like a lot is going on with the den, and uh, I'm real curious to see how this all shapes out. I guess uh, we'll just have to stay tuned and see how this all develops. Yeah. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Friday Night Titans here on the Schmodown, the World Championship of Movie Trivia. Alongside Andrew Guy, I am Mark Baby Carrots, Ellis, and Andrew. Two scintillating matches, and unlike some other Friday Night Titans episodes, we actually know most of the competitors we're going to see tonight. Yeah, most of them. We have a main event tonight with Peggy Gubbins and the Survivor going up against Ben Bateman, and I promise you it is not me. Is it you? A mystery. It's not, not me. Not you. I, I swear to God it's not me, but a mystery partner. No idea who that could be because the Den has really been playing musical Factions? <laughs> Is that a thing? Look, the, the Den split last year, we saw it all spectacular, and, and now we're sort of seeing the fallout, the collateral damage, the shrapnel, if you will, yeah. still picking up the pieces from that. And so now, Peggy G and the Survivor taking on Ben Bateman and somebody not named, I really hope, Andrew Guy, because I me. really enjoy you up here as opposed to breaking equipment here in the studio. Yeah, I'll tell you, I, Sam Levine came up to me, he handed me a drink, I blacked out <laughs> for a couple weeks, and we're back. So I, I'm happy to be here, but first, before our main event we have another kind of piece of the den showing up in our undercard tonight with Saul going up against Amaru Moses once again but Saul is on the fence with the den you saw what went down between him and the den mother and my god did mama bear come out Mama Bear came out big time, and so now when you have this rematch that we're going to see, because last year at Collision, what a ball game Amaru Moses played, TKOing Saul, who we've seen be incredible at inner geekdom, but it was all Amaru Moses that day. Can he repeat, or is Saul going to get a measure of revenge? There's a lot on the line here, because whoever gets a win today, Pretty big matchup next week. Yeah, they get a number one contender match against the man, the myth, the legend himself, Kevin the Smasher Smets. And this is really important, Mark, because when you look at the records of Saul and Amaru, both of them exceptional in inner geekdom, but when it comes to those S-tier players, the Kalinowskis, the Parkers, they've struggled just a little bit. So what a great way to warm up today to get ready for the win next week. Oh, it's going to be a good one. So that's next Friday. Of course, next Tuesday is Molly the Wonder Dog's birthday. But right now it is Friday Night Titans, and we are ready to get going. Andrew, you prepped? You ready? You ready to turn it over to our – do we know who our announcer is? I believe it is the wonderful Ken Napsok. Ladies, gentlemen, and all of our friends around the world, it's time for the Movie Trivia Schmodown. The following contest is scheduled for three rounds in the Inner Geekdom Division. Introducing first, with a record of four wins, three defeats, and four knockouts, he is a man unto himself. This is Saul. I like that. A man unto himself. And there is Saul, who's now rogue, just playing for himself and a measure of pride, I imagine, well, in the inner geekdom. You know, Ellis, we saw how well it worked for Sam Levine to come out and play by himself. Saul backed into a corner, angry with what has gone down with the den. Let's see what he's got. <laughs> he was a lion, now he appears to be a tiger, or at the very least, the mutant Sabretooth from X-Men. Let's meet his opponent. 
and his opponent, representing Swag, and accompanied to the arena by his manager, Winston Marshall, with a record of three wins, one defeat, and one KO. Here is Amaru Moses. There's Adam the Coyote Collins in what appears to be Paulo Yamas here. Winston is here. And awesome. there is Swag showing up, Ellis. Is that Adam Collins in somewhat of a Canadian tuxedo? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, it's, um, I can't look away. Oh, here we go. Looking at not looking away. Swag not missing a beat. Saul now on his own, but Amaru, when he was dropped by the usual suspects, with Sam Jordan back into the league. Winston swooped in and immediately picked him up. And you can see they have not missed a beat. On the same page, ready to go. They have pretty good chemistry there. They're giving the uh, Wild Berries a run for their money as far yeah. as uh, shirts are available. Wedding shop. reception, yeah. dance moves in the Schmodown go. All right, so the competitors are <laughs> set. The trusted manager of Amaru Moses representing Team Swag, Winston Marshall by his side. Saul going rogue. Here are the rules of round number one. Ten questions, each one worth a point spanning the entire galaxy of the inner geekdom division. 15 seconds to get your response written. One point per question, no penalty for missing one. You each have three repeats. You may use it any time throughout the three round match. Starting with you, Saul, a man who, although a bunch of cameras and crews separate us, I am still terrified of you. Do you I got you. feel like you're ready to go? Sure. <laughs> I don't got you anymore. I, nope. Yeah, I'm a little I'm nervous good. myself. I'm Amaru, always a friendly face. Are you ready to compete? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Then let's get ready to Schmodown! Yeah. Throaty crowd here today, Andrew. Oh, yeah, They're everyone's excited to see work. a little bit of bad blood brewing here. All right, gentlemen, 10 questions coming your way, starting with the category of Star Wars. In A New Hope, what planet is C-3PO talking about when he says, what a desolate place this is? So much fanfare, so much hype about this match, but especially Inner Geekdom. Once the questions start flying, you really gotta lock in because it's so specific. Absolutely. Each I mean, and every answer here. And the amount of questions your opponent misses is, is very, Four. very small. Three, two, one. Pens down, let's go to Saul. Tatooine. He is correct. And Amru with his trusty NBA. Tatooine. All right, I love a good NBA dry erase yeah, for it. Love it. Drawing up some X's and O's there, like Norman Dale. Your next question is in the category of Jurassic Park, which I'm told features dinosaurs. Here's your question. In Jurassic Park 3, William H. Macy and Teo Leone play Paul and Amanda. What is their last name? I assume they're either uh, married or brother-sister. Do you have any intel on that? Uh, I believe it's brother-sister. Where I'm from, it might be the same. <laughs> <laughs> from a region of the country. Five, four, three, two. One. Pens down, and let's go to Junior NBA first. Kirby. Kirby is correct, like that cute pink guy from Nintendo. How Didn't about... Have it. Saul did not have it. All right, so... This here early in round number one. Two to one. Amaru in the lead. Question number three to your category is Marvel. In Avengers Age of Ultron, many heroes try to lift Thor's hammer at the party, thinking it is some sort of trick. Who is the first to attempt lifting the hammer? I bet I can do it. I, it, it you and I are at that party. Which, by the way, can you imagine your Instagram numbers? Oh my goodness. Take a couple Lord. selfies there. You would try to pick it, pick it up, wouldn't you? I might even do a reel. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll have uh, Abby Friel come in here and help me with a TikTok. Please, Abby, help us. I don't know how to get it on my phone. Five. Don't have it. Four, three, two, one. Let's go to Saul. Tony Stark. It's incorrect. How about Amaru Moses? Hawkeye. That is correct. It was Glenn Barton from the very enjoyable series I just yeah, saw. Yeah, yeah. More on that. Just caught some of Moon Knight now. And moving on to question number four. It's in the category of Middle Earth, vacation spot. Your question for a point. In The Hobbit, an unexpected journey, Durin's day is the start of the new year for the dwarves as what season ends? I feel like hanging out with the dwarves would be so much fun. They just like to eat. Drink, smoke, yell. Big drinkers. Yeah, big, big, drinkers. big drinkers. It can get a little unwieldy. There's a lot of weapons around. It's true. I know how you are with weapons. And we all get angry. Four, three, you're trying to lift Thor's hammer, for God's sake. <laughs> Two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Amaru. Winter. 
is incorrect. How about Saul? Ball. That is correct. Also, one of the Autumn. Big, big point there for Saul. It always hurts when you miss a couple in a row in round one, but that is excellent for his confidence. Moving on to question number five. Category is Batman. I knew Harvey Dent is the first line spoken in what Batman film? Yeah, that's how you remember it by the calendar, is that the primary football season is autumn winter, but then Durant's day is when the playoffs start. Yeah. Big, big pickup for the Orcs getting Tyreek Hill. I, <laughs> <laughs> Four, I got nothing. This is three, <laughs> two, one. Orcs, Dolphins, you know, six of one, half dozen the other. Pens down, let's go to Saul. Dark Knight Rises. And for the moment, he ties Amaru, but does he have the correct answer? The Dark Knight Rises. He does uh, indeed. <laughs> and wow, did that Dark Knight rise fast. Little Thermacare pad, he's back to 100%. Your question for a point. Alien and Predator is the category of the question. In what year did the film Predator 2 come out? Yeah, not quite as good as the first one, but still, I love Predator 2. I have on good authority that uh, Moses' manager Winston Marshall just saw the first Predator film for the first time. Oh, yeah. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, let's go to Sir Moses. 1990. That is accurate. How about Saul? 1990. Okay, they both knew that one. Three years after the OG. Back to you, Andrew, for question seven. All right, scores and soundtracks. Who composed the score of Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl? Our friends over at the uh, hit game show settled the score. Mm. Uh, Matt Nost and Andy Mer Merriweather. Uh, Winston and I took each other on, and uh, it's – it, it's one of the better matches in Celtic score history. I do Much like Celtic our match. Score. Yeah, I've, I still can't. Five, I just can't win. I cannot four, win at that show. Three. You got a couple, right? Two. One. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Dad. I'm being nice to you. <laughs> Let's go to Saul. Hans Zimmer. Is incorrect. How about Amaru Moses? Klaus Bedelt. Wow, that's wow. a deep cut, and he nailed it. That is now a two-point lead for Moses over Saul. Six to four. No perfect round threat anymore, but they're both adjudicating themselves very well here. Your next question is in the category of graphic novels that luckily for us were adapted into films. Here's your question for a point. Which actor plays the God King Xerxes in the films 300 and 300 Rise of an Empire? That's a unique look, that Xerxes look. How many sit-ups did you do after watching that first 300? Well, that was like 18 at the time, so. Yeah, you were pretty a, pumped a up. A lot. Yeah, you were you're ready to go defend Sparta. I was older, so I was they, like, nah, I'm good. And uh, they never looked that way. Four, Not even close. Three, two, one. A lot of baby oil back in the day. Uh, <laughs> Pens down, let's go to Amaru Moses. Rodrigo Santoro. Is correct. It's all have it. Didn't have it. Didn't have it. All right. And so that's a three-point gap that Moses has opened over Saul. Seven to four now as we head into our next question. And there's our penultimate one. Nice. You're welcome. Category is Wizarding World. In the Goblet of Fire, what is the name of the item that holds Dumbledore's memories? I need one of those. <laughs> <laughs> I just need something to help me out. Yeah, you know, you get over a, a certain uh, age hurdle in your life, and uh, I spent three hours looking for my keys. You know where they were? In your pocket. In my hand. What? <laughs> Five. Been there. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down. Let's try Saul. Pen C. Is correct. Yeah. And Dombrew Moses. Pensieve. Nailed it. Let's go. So it is eight Let's to go, five. Go. The crowd exhorting on really both competitors here. I think there's a measure of sympathy that we're seeing for Saul, but yeah. it does feel like the crowd really enjoying Amaru Moses for swag too. And so eight to five. Here's your final question in round number one for a point. The category is DC. And the question. This 2000s DC film primarily takes place in 1985. You were that is, uh, 15? In 1985, yeah. I was saying goodbye to my first family. Had enough of them. Here's your money. One of them. Don't call. Here's a Nerf football for the Titans. I'm going Five, on the road. Four, three, <laughs> two, one. It was fun opening for Foxworthy back in the day. <laughs> Pens down. Let's go to Amaru Moses. Watchmen. Is correct. And so Watchmen. Also had Watchmen. All right. And so there you have it, nine to six. And I'm just going to put this on record Ooh. right now. That was a big pull for Saul. Yes. You do not want to be trailing by any more than three. It's a, it 
deep enough ditch as it is, but I think Saul has the game to pull himself yeah. out of it. But Amaru Moses yeah. looking exactly like the Amaru that we saw last season. I could not agree more. Saul coming back and getting those last few points, getting over that hump of five points means that this game is still anyone's match. Ellis, tell us about round two. Round number two is the wheel round. The wheel of fate, doom, and justice. Each competitor gets a spin. Once you settle on a category, five questions emerge. Each one worth two points. Keep in mind there is multiple choice, at which point the value of the question will drop to one. And stealing is available in round two, just in the Schmodown, not in real life. So we go to Amru Moses first. You have a decision to make, young man. Would you like to spin that wheel first or defer to your opponent? Would like to allow Saul to spin that wheel. All right, he is offering Saul the spin. Saul, step up to the plate. And well, there is the spin, and it was the wheel that felled Saul when these two met last season. And alien? he has spun Alien. We're going again. And Predator, he's going to respin. Each competitor with a mulligan. Yeah, round on, and round it goes. Those wild card slices are alert. Oh, there it is! On a wild card <laughs> slice. So again, folks, it's still relatively young in the season. Here is how it works. Saul spun the wild card slice, so he's going to peel that back, and we're going to find out, is it opponent's choice, is it spinner's choice, or is it going to be a mystery brand new category in round two? One of the more Saul? exciting things about season nine. Could be great, could be horrible, and it's the Matrix the series. The Matrices. The Matrices films. Every film in the war of the Matrix is now headed Saul's way, and it's it, you don't really know how to prepare for this. Obviously, competitors are aware that the Matrix could be in an inner geekdom match, but how deep is his knowledge? Did he take the red pill? And you got to think about that fourth Matrix movie that just came out. Just how much has Saul seen that film? How much has he studied? We'll find out right now. All right, Saul, five questions coming your way in the category of the Matrix series. Gloria Foster and Mary Alice both play what role in the Matrix trilogy? The Oracle. Didn't take more than a second no. there. That is two points. Bouncing back in round number two, only down by one. Your second question, Saul. In the Matrix, the film begins with police attempting to capture Trinity. How many units were sent in to get her? Three units. That is incorrect. Now for the steal, the two-point steal, Amaru. In The Matrix, the film begins with police attempting to capture Trinity. How many units were sent in to get her? Four. No, Lieutenant, your men are already dead. <laughs> that is incorrect. Ah. We were looking for two well units. Other way. Look at this other there. way. And Saul very, very happy about that. Not ah. giving up two more points to his opponent. Your third question in the category of The Matrix series who portrays Thomas Anderson's business partner named Smith in The Matrix Resurrections? Multiple choice, please. I can do that. Is it A, Hugo Weaving, B, Neil Patrick Harris, C, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II, or D, Jonathan Groff? The answer is D, Jonathan Groff. That is correct for one more point. Great check down. We got a tie ball game now, Ellis. Now it's time for Saul to pull away. Harry Lennox portrays a commander in the Matrix trilogy. What is his name? Locke. That is correct for two wow. big points. Saul on top for the first time today. This guy's feeling himself. Now he can take even more points as his lead before Amaru gets a spin. Your final question. In the Matrix Reloaded, according to Agent Smith, what binds us, connects us, and defines us? Five, four, three. Multiple choice, please. Is it A, rebirth, B, reason, C, purpose, or D, duty? C, purpose. That is correct. Another great check down yeah. there for Saul. Up okay. three. Now it's Amaru's turn A at the wheel. Big pull there by Saul there. Didn't give away any steals. He gave away yeah. one opportunity. Moses couldn't cash it in. And apparently that's why that uh, they couldn't capture Trinity. You only send two units in? Yeah. After Come Trinity? On. What are you A doing? Legend? Yeah. Come on. You seen what she can do? At least six units. Here's Moses up to try his hand at the wheel. He's looking at it. Double wild card, maybe. Who knows? We got a double wild card, and so it could be spinners, could be opponents. I think he might rather avoid it altogether. He spun yeah, the worlds of Marvel. So you got the MCU in there. You got some prior films. We're taking this. He's going to keep okay. it. All right. Amaru, 
five questions in the worlds of Marvel. See by your shirt, you might be a fan. Here is your first question of five for two points. Who voices Miles' mother, Rio, in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse? Lauren Velez. Two points for Amaru. I thought he might be going to multiple on choice, but we do it, did not need it. Your next question for two more points. In Ant-Man and the Wasp, what was the tallest that Dr. Foster says he was able to grow to by using his suit? Multiple choice. All right, your four options for a point. Is it A, 21 feet, B, 43 feet, C, 65 feet, or D, 55 feet? 21 feet. The number worn by Tim Duncan is correct for a point, and with that, we are tied at 12. Amru Moses still with three questions remaining in his round number two, such as this next one. Mark Ruffalo, Paul Bettany, Bill Maher, and Corey Hawkins are featured in what MCU film? Four, three, two. Repeat the question. All right, that's his first repeat, two remaining. Mark Ruffalo, Paul Bettany, Bill Maher, and Corey Hawkins are featured in what MCU film? Five, four, three, two. Multiple choice. All right, your four options for a point. Is it A, The Avengers? B, Iron Man 3, C, Avengers Age of Ultron, or D, Captain America Civil War? Five, four, three, two. Captain America Civil War. Is incorrect, and so now for a one point steal, so I'm gonna repeat the question and the options before you wager a guess. Mark Ruffalo, Paul Bettany, Bill Maher, and Corey Hawkins are featured in what MCU film? Is it A, The Avengers, B, Iron Man 3, C, Avengers Age of Ultron, or D, Captain America Civil War? B, Iron Man 3. Didn't know Bill Maher was a superhero, but I that is correct either. for <laughs> one point. 13 that to 12, big steal there for Saul. Huge, Ellis. You never want to go into round three down by six. That was a potential of happening at the beginning of that question. Not only that does not happen, Saul walks away with a stolen point. Huge round two. That's right. Planet of the Apes has not been a factor yet today. Yet. I think that is music to Saul's yeah. ears. We go back to I Amaru Moses. <laughs> we are. Please, I did not accuse you. Andrew is correct. What are you doing? Two points for you. Thank you. Uh, your penultimate question, Sir Moses, in the worlds of Marvel for two points. In Fantastic Four from 2005, what is Sue Storm's favorite flower? Five, four, three. Multiple choice. All right, your four options for a point. Is it A, sunflowers, B, orchids, C, lilies, or D, roses? Five, four. Sunflowers. Do you think you guessed it? I think you got it. You got it yeah. right. It's a correct <laughs> I think you answer. did. So 13 to 13. It is all wow. tied up. One question remaining. Moses could seize a two-point lead, but if he gives away a steal opportunity, Saul looking to cash that in. Amaru's final question in the worlds of Marvel is, who directed the 1998 film Blade? Steven Norrington. That's a two-point correct answer. And even so has to applaud that pull from Amaru Moses. 15 to 13 in favor of Amaru heading into the all-important final round three. Yeah, you look at Saul being down two in a very, very great position, but got to make his way through the hardest round yet. Ellis, tell us how round three works. That's why it's the round that will determine the match. Each player faces three questions that increase in difficulty and point value. First question's worth two points. Next one, three points. Final question, five points. 
And again, whoever's in the lead at the end of this match will be declared the winner. So Amaru Moses, you are enjoying a lead of two points. And now we need some answers from you in the form of numbers. We need you to pick three numbers that may range from 1 to 16. That's where we're going to get your questions derived from. From 1 to 16, what feels lucky? 16, 10, 13. 16, okay. 10, and 13. And Saul. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, please. Saul going 1, okay. 2, 3. Okay. Easy for me. Easy for Andrew. He will be administering the questions. Saul will be handling the duties for Amaru Moses. And so, Saul, you face a two-point question. Now, if you hit it, you're going to be tied, and that's going to help him avoid the TKO. Andrew, what category did Saul end up selecting, perhaps inadvertently, with his category number one? Saul, that is going to take you over to X-Men for your two-point question and to tie the game and to send it back over to your opponent. For two points, what year saw the release of The Wolverine? 2013. We got a tie ball game, Ellis. There it is. 15, 15, and round number three. All right, so no TKO here. This one could, in fact, go down to the wire. So we pivot to Amaru Moses for his two-point question. You selected pretty much the opposite of Saul, the final number, the highest number you could, 16, and that corresponds to welcome to Jurassic Park. And your question for two points and regain a two-point lead. Who plays Vic Hoskins, head of InGen Security Operations, who wants to use the Velociraptors as military animals in Jurassic World? Vincent D'Onofrio. It's a scary question I just read. Yeah, you know, sure is. Weaponizing animals that are dinosaurs for the military. That is correct. 17 to 15, so we go back to Saul for his three-pointer. He could take the lead if he hits this next question. That's right, Saul. You selected number two for your three-point question, which is going to take us to our favorite web-slinging friend, Spider-Man, for three points and to send it back over with a one-point lead. In The Amazing Spider-Man, Uncle Ben brings a box from the basement that is filled with his trophies from what? Bowling. That is correct. For three more points, Saul fighting back here in round number three. I love bowling. That's right. This is the performance that you know Saul had in him probably last year too, but he's really putting it on full display and pushing Amaru Moses to the limit here. So we go back to Moses for his three-point question. Finds himself in the category of dystopian future slash time travel. And here is your question. Peter Hyams directed what 1994 film featuring Mia Sara? Five, four, three, two. Repeat the question. All right. It's your second one. You have one remaining. Categories dystopian future time travel. The question Peter Hyams directed what 1994 film featuring Mia Sarah? Five, four, three, two. Waterworld. Waterworld is. Incorrect, looking for time cop. You can see Saul over there. He knew the answer. He thought it was an easy question, but now we stay with Amaru Moses, who has now got his back up against the rope. Only his five-point question remains down one. We're, there. We're getting word that there is going to be a challenge from the manager of Swag. We'll allow the team to talk it over if you want to with your competitor, and then we'll have a rebuttal from Saul should the need arise. Um, Time Cop is not listed under Dystopian Future and Time Travel as one of the listed movies in that category is what we're challenging. Okay, so the challenge on the floor is that the competitors who are made aware of any movie that could questions arise from in Inner Geekdom saying that it was not there. And so we're going to be right back with our official ruling after consulting with an independent line judge. We're back, and we have the combination here. A little bit of history and how the Schmodown works. So our amazing team of writers will send out a document to each and every competitor and manager, letting them know that these are the movies that could potentially arise in any given Intergeekdom category. 
at the top of that document says that movies are eligible to bounce in between categories. And so while Time Cop may not have been listed under dystopian future time travel films, it is considered an inner geekdom movie and is listed on the list of eligible films in inner geekdom. And so unfortunate though it may be, the ruling on the field stands. The challenge is overruled and it is 18 to 17. Saul still has a one point lead over Amaru Moses, as Moses now faces his final. You know, Ellis, pointer. it's a really, really great challenge. It's one of the best things about having a team yeah. behind you and someone like Paulo Ayama and Whitson who are so tuned in. But that is part of inner geekdom. That is part of the document. Them's the rules, baby. Moving on to our five-point question. All right, so as the competitors reset here, we now do go to the category of Marvel Films for Amaru Moses and his five-point question. Amaru, you hit this, you enjoy a four-point lead. If you miss it, Saul will be declared the winner of the match. And here is your question. For five points and the lead, Doug Hutchinson plays Looney Bin Jim in what 2000s Marvel comic film? Punish the war zone. We got that one right wow. off the bat. Five big points for Amaru, 22 to 18. And so it is a four point gap between Amaru in the lead and Saul trailing, but Saul now faces his five pointer. This is the question, Andrew, that will determine the match. Saul selected category three. What is he looking at? He is looking at Planet of the Apes oh. for his five point question. You cannot curse. write this. Stuff. You cannot. I was going to say it's the curse of the announcing desk. So here we go. Saul for five points and the win. What apes film features the line, tell me, Breck, before you die, how do we differ from the dogs and cats that you and your kind used to love? Why did you turn us from pets into slaves? That's definitely something you want to do. You have all three, you get an additional one if somehow uh, you were to go to four, sudden death, which can't happen. Three. Two. Please repeat the question. All right, that's his first. Category of Planet of the Apes for five points. What apes film features the line, tell me, Breck, before you die, how do we differ from the dogs and cats that you and your kind used to love? Why did you turn us from pets into slaves? When there's this many movies in a category, one line. Incredibly specific, but that's why it's the five. That's why it's a five pointer for the game. Five, four, Three, two. Can you please repeat the question? Second one, one remain. Five points, Planet of the Apes. What apes film features the line, tell me Breck before you die, how do we differ from the dogs and cats that you and your kind used to love? Why did you turn us from pets into slaves? Yeah, I always say you have to reread them to use them when you read them. But really Conquest is. of the Planet of the Apes. And your winner! <sighs> Saul gets over his live audience hump, and now he is on yeah, the board man. with a W here yeah. in studio. What a pull by Saul, and it couldn't have been a more poetic ending to this rematch that we saw from Collision last year, where Saul really struggling in that Planet of the Apes category. Yeah. Not the case today. He had a five-pointer. The answer was the Conquest one, and he knocked it out of the stadium. And I think the most impressive thing was how he bounced back after a rough round one. Now, if your opponent scores the same as you, it doesn't feel that bad. But Saul went down early, and he went down by a good amount as he went into round number two. That's what the Schmodown is all about, playing through that wheel. You always say it, luck, justice, all those things come into play in round number two, and Saul was able to hold on, and then what a fascinating final round. I mean, this is the way you kick off a Friday Night Titans. Not without a little bit of controversy, That's and right. so I'm sure that that ruling is going to be talked about a little bit. That's the way it goes here in the Schmodown, the World Championship of Movie Trivia. And speaking of championship, Saul getting one step closer to possibly competing for a belt in the inner geekdom. Now he has a number one contender shot. He's going to be taking against Kevin the Smasher Smets. Whew, Friday Night Titans, you never know what to expect. So now we turn it over for an exclusive interview. First with Saul with the great Jen Sturger. I don't want to call it 
one of the biggest upsets I've seen, but that might have been one of the biggest upsets I've seen in my time here at the Movie Trivia Schmodown. First of all, congratulations on a fantastic match. You and I have a history together, like that people back home, like they just, they don't know because I've seen you after some of your biggest losses and I've seen how hard you take them and how much this game means to you. So I have to ask you, what does this victory today mean to you? Well, it means, Jen, and we talked about this last summer, that I scored more points than I'm. So now I get to be over here highfalutin. So that means a lot. But um, I have to thank Amaru Moses for giving me a war today. And I got to thank Winston Marshall. And Rue, I'm telling you, we're going to run this back. I promise you, we're going to run this back. And maybe today, we're a little busy. Not today, but we're going to run this back. And you know what? Maybe we get the hardware involved, and we'll give them all five rounds next time. I love this. I love this new confidence from Saul. I have to say, though, watching you battle back, I got a little bit nervous for you after round one because you were obviously playing from behind. Talk to me about what your mindset was like after that first round going into your spin. I don't know that my mindset is uh, as interesting. I don't think you really want to hear about that. <laughs> I don't think it's uh, it's not great for uh, what we're trying to put down in the schmo down now with our family friendly era. But I need uh, my mind's only been on one thing this year, uh, this this week, and and um, you know, I thought a lot about losing, and I thought about what it means when you lose, and when people show up for you, and people give you time, when friends show up and they take away time and energy from their lives and their husbands and their wives and their friends, and you don't show up for them. That's not losing. That's failing. And I failed a lot of people last year. And I swear to you, I'm not going to fail anyone anymore. I know uh, it's been. Oh, you're okay. <laughs> I love this side of you. I truly do because I don't think. Sometimes I think the fans don't understand how much this game means to the competitors. Like I said, you and I. Have We've had l many a talks after matches, um, and I've just seen how much this game really impacts you and how hard you do take losses. That's why I personally got very nervous for you after that first round. But I guess the real question I want to ask you is, you know, you had a really rough week last week with, with the split up with, with Kate and the Den. How much did that play into your mindset out there today? It was... Uh I'm not gonna, I can't lie, I could, I, it, was, it was the preeminent thought in my head all week. And um, for two years, I, uh, I had the greatest manager in the Schmodan. And you know, on the runaround with Janush and Barry, they talk about great managers and they'll talk about how Roxy Stryer will rip a throat out for you and how, yeah. how the Queen Shannon Barney will make you a better player and, and how Dagnino, he'll build a team around you and he'll orchestrate. And they think those are the best managers. They don't talk about getting picked up at the airport. And they don't talk about calling you in the middle of the night because you're crazy and you're the only one who will tolerate me. They don't talk about that. They don't talk about that being great managing. But it is. It is the best. And for two years, you know, and Tom Dagnino and, and Sam and Winston Marshall are going to make you a better player. I had a manager that made me a better person. And for two years, I couldn't get it done for her. I couldn't, I couldn't be everything she needed. And she's on a different path right now. And being a friend is there for your friends when they mess up. And sometimes being a great friend is telling them they've messed up. And I guess I just have to live out the consequences of that. And I'll never have a a manager again. That was my only manager I'll ever have. And the Saul Show is going solo. There's a new producer in charge, and the Trivia Gorilla is now the star of the Saul Show. So be ready for that. Well, you know, there's a lot of major competitors out there in the inner geekdom. I'm sure you're well aware. Um, who do you want next, you know? You just walked in. <laughs> Smets, it's a pleasure to see you today. So I wanted to open by saying, you talked about how you failed a lot of people. I'm telling you, when I was away, you did not fail me. You sent me care packages, you called, you made sure I was okay. So for that, I respect you. 
and I love you as a friend. So I don't want you to be too hard on yourself about Kate. I know what it's like when you have a friend um, diss you or betray you, and then you have to go out and perform. What you did out there impressed the hell out of me. I know what it's like to be an underdog. I know what it's like for everyone to tell you, you're not going to be able to do it. You're not going to be able to climb that mountain. And you did it right here. You proved to everybody here that you can do it. And I've always been a fan, always been a fan of you. So I'm looking forward to our match next week. I tell you what, I hope they have insurance for this place, right? Because when you play against the Smasher, we're going to bring the whole house down. But you might want to have a little pr private insurance for yourself too. Because I guarantee you this, when the dust settles, there'll be one person standing there, and that's me because it's my destiny to get my belt back from Mike Kalinowski, and it's not personal, it's just destiny. Thank you, Kev, I appreciate everything you just said, but I gotta remind you of something. You're not the underdog anymore. And if you out there, you wanna lay that sucker money on the favorite, you go right ahead. Because the next very exciting installment of the Saul Show, the season renewal kicks off with me and the comeback kid kicking each other's ass all over the new studio, and I can't wait for that. I was born to play you, Kevin. Your biggest fan, and you going at it, I'm not gonna miss it for the world. I'll see you next week, bub. Woo! Congratulations again on a well-fought victory. Back to the desk. All right, well, look, you see that the underdog's yeah. getting interviewed, and then wouldn't you know it, the Smasher, he's fully back now that he's oh, crashing yes, he post-match interviews. And you talk about what is coming up next week is our main event on Friday Night Titans. Can Saul pull off the double upset? A lot of people expected Amaru to take the win here yeah. today. It was the first guy to knock Saul out after he'd been knocking all of his opponents out. But Kevin, the Smasher Smets, that is an S-tier player. Can Saul pull it off again? I guess... You guys will have to tune back in next week. I mean, look, I enjoy being on my own for an extended period of months sometimes, and Saul now on his own, yeah. going rogue. He's just a one man and probably a motorcycle somewhere in the desert, but <laughs> it ended up paying off big time here in the form of earning a number one contender shot against, who you just saw, Kevin the Smasher Smet. So now we go over to Amaru Moses, who, who played incredible today. He, he really did. Can't take anything away from the kid. Missed a question, uh, some controversy about whether that, that movie should be in that specific category, but that's how it works in inner geekdom is that movies can jump in and out of categories without prior warning. The writers and the team here do our best, but sometimes a time cop happens. I mean, you know, it's a movie about time travel. That inner geekdom caveat is something you always have to keep in mind. I don't believe he didn't know the answer because of the category in and of itself, but maybe we'll find out here as Swag, Winston Marshall, Amaru visit Jen Sturger. Amaru, that was not the outcome I don't think a lot of people at home were expecting. That was a huge upset today. How are you feeling after this? The same I felt last time, and it's more annoying. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm frustrated more at myself. Uh, I'm frustrated because I'm supposed to come in here and, and get points for this guy. And uh, second match in a row, I, I lose a lead that uh, I should take care of. And challenge or not, it's still something I, I, I've heard. I knew his name. Uh, I just couldn't pull the movie at, at, at that moment and wanted to save a repeat. So, Where do you think the, the wheels kind of fell off today? Um, They never fell off. They, they never fell off. I kept the lead going into round three, which was what was supposed to happen. Um, I answered my two, I answered my five. That three-pointer, legit, they said that category, and I kept a list of movies in my head, and it was those movies, and everything coming up was like, that doesn't make sense, that doesn't make sense, that doesn't, none of this makes sense. I'm not wasting a repeat, let me just throw a movie out there, I know I'm wrong, and uh, he came in, my team came in, and challenged when they were supposed to, I was thinking I was gonna get it, but but you know what? It is what it is. Um, yeah. So once your brain starts scrolling through that Rolodex of films, it's like like you're saying, it's like if the movie that you're thinking it might be isn't there, you're like, well, clearly that's not it. Winston, you guys had a phenomenal challenge today. I mean, I I, I honestly thought that could have gone either way, um, but I, I saw Yama come running over to you, and you guys kind of conferred really quickly. That was fantastic teamwork. I have to give it to you there. That's. I mean, that is what swag does we are a unit um and so everybody is on top of their game like that because i'm sitting here in my brain trying to do the math and so knowing paul knowing adam knowing the crew is in the crowd talking it out and then we're talking out as a team that's what it means to have people at your back man so you you played one hell of a game 
Uh, it didn't break our particular way, but we're not stressed out about it. Did you see that kid in play we did when the match started? That, sh that was crisp, okay? That was crisp as hell, all right? So we'll bounce back. We ain't worried. I do like this element of fun that you're bringing to Moses because I feel like you can get a little bit cerebral and a little bit in your head. So having someone like Winston to keep you uh, loose and having a good time, I feel like that's an element of your game that is going to elevate you to a different level. I, I mean, I had a ball today, and, and it was because of this dude right here. It was because of this dude right here, and, and I'm going to continue to do that. Uh, I'll be back. Saul so said it. Uh, go get that belt, man, cause cause that rubber match is coming. Um, I'm not losing. I'm not losing that Lee Lex time though. Let's let's go. Hey, have let's an go, animal crack. You'll feel better. You want more, Jen? Uh, those aren't gluten free. I'm good. No, they're not. <laughs> All right, bye, y'all. Back to the desk. Look, the, the guy's a great sport, and yes. and what a competitor he is. You know, it, it it hurts his pride a little bit to take a loss to anybody because Amaru Moses is that good of a player. 100%. Anybody who claims that they're better at intergeekdom than him, he wants them to prove it. And Saul edging him out today after he got TKO'd by Amaru Moses last season. What a turn of events here for Swag, for Amaru, and now with Saul having the number one contender shot against Kevin Smets. That's your headliner next week for Friday Night Titans. <laughs> yes, Speaking of headliners, Andrew Guy, uh, any more information on your end? I have not been apprised of anything, namely, who the hell is Ben Bateman playing with? I do not know. It is not me. I pr Stop. At, you've asked me before the show, after the show. You called me last night. Call me at 3 a.m. Why? I, I had other things in my mind, but I trust you at the desk. As soon as he leaves the desk, loose cannon. So I guess we're all going to find out who is going to be taking on the team of Peggy Gubbins and the Survivor. It's going to be Ben Bateman and not me. We'll be right back. <laughs> You know, so many different times I'm going through the comments section and I see, oh, I would have gotten that one right. I could be a Schmodown personality. You think you have what it takes to become a Schmodown champion? Well, the auditions for season nine, it's open all year. You submit a three to five minute video to Schmodown Auditions at skybound.com. You want to be a champion? Of course, you got to be good at trivia. But are you a personality? Do you have a big character? Show us what you got. Schmodown Auditions at skybound.com and become the next big star of the Schmodown tomorrow. Glad you're watching the matches, and I hope you're having a fun time. I also wanted to know if you didn't know already, we got a brand new channel. It's the Christian Harloff channel. Head on over there, subscribe to it. I have so much stuff on this channel. I have reviews, trailer reactions. I have the big thing. If you didn't know what that was, it's a podcast that I do, and I have guests on all the time. Wednesday nights, I have Sith Council. It's our Star Wars show. Lots of great stuff. If you didn't know I have my own channel, well, I do. So you should head on over there, subscribe. All right, now get back to watching this. Tweet at me. Tell me what you thought about tonight's episode. The wild berries are back. You know what that means? The wild berry shirts are back. Everybody wants a wild berry shirt. That's their whole shtick. But you know, what about Lady Justice? Support Marisol McKee and get one of those shirts. How about your favorite factions? Whether it's corruption, swag, the list goes on and on and on. With the brand new reboot shirt, it is on the store at Skybound right now. We have a bunch of stuff on the Schmodown store right now. Please go and check that out. Share it on our social media, hashtag Schmodown, and let everyone else see you do it. It's the Schmodown. You know, the Survivor's got to thank you a lot for this opportunity. I'm looking forward to this tag team match. Yeah, me too. You know, it's my pleasure. I, I've been there before getting an opportunity like this. I wanted to make sure I gave it to the right guy, and I think you're the right guy. Yeah, and the Survivor's not going to let you down. I'm going to bring it all in the ring. I hope oh, so. I'm I hope so, so glad it's been I fun. Ran to you guys. Hi. What's up? Oh, I wanted to wish you good luck. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. By, by the way, Kate, so nice to meet you, David. Survivor. Uh, Survivor, excuse me. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I said that. Um, by the way, Thank you for doing this for us. Yes. We are going to snatch her right back. But <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, because you're being so cool about this, you tell me any manager you want, I will put in a call for you, okay? Oh, the survivor's gonna really think about this. This is a very interesting opportunity. Yes, yes. Does he always speak in third person? Oh, a little bit, oh, yeah, a little so, bit. Okay. That's okay, We're what's up? We're having a thing. No. I don't know, like, we talked about it beforehand, but he's not gonna play. What? He's freaking out, he's this got is nerves. Why we don't... No, I, look, Kate, we, He's a good dude, okay? He's really good at trivia. He's a total sweetheart. He's just nervous. He's got nerves. I mean, I remember my first match. Yeah, me too. Right. I mean, I just, I, uh, he, yeah. He's too know. green. You know what? Let me talk to him. You? Seriously, yeah. Let me talk to him. I think I might be able to make some headway. Okay. Would you? Yeah, yeah, No problem. Sure. Hang on. Hey, um, what's his name? 
Jeff. Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Hey, it's Peggy. Hey, I, I know you can be nervous, man. Trust me, I've been there. It's, it's, it's daunting. The thing you've been a fan of, I'm assuming for years, you're finally going to be a part of it. And the nerves, they can take over. But you want to know what? Let's look at it from a different perspective. You get to be a part of it. This thing that you've loved, that you are a patron, it's, it's a dream come true. That's the perspective you got to look at it through. And I assure you, we're going to be kind. We're going to be encouraging the entire way. We want to see you do well. We want to see you succeed. So what do you say, man? It's going to be fun. I assure you, we're going to go out there and we're going to have fun. You're going to want to look back on this and realize what a fun day this was. Jeff, I'm going to come in real quick and talk to you. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. As he always does. You are amazing. Thank yeah. you. I cannot wait to have you back. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Oh, thank you. I think I can do the help. Hold it. I hope oh, it got through. I don't believe me, but it will. Thank you. That was amazing. I can't believe you. You got me motivated to go. You got me ready to go. I'm just ready to do some reps right now. I just hope I got through because I'm going to play, you know? Well, you know, the survivor always stays ready, so you let me know. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. Let's see. Hey, I don't know what you just did. He's going to play. Yes. Okay. He's excited. He's excited to play. Good. So I'm going to finish up with him and get ready, but we'll see you guys out there. Yeah, see you out All there. All right. Let's go. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. It worked. We got a match. Baby. We got a match. Let's go. And we're back here on a Friday night. Titans. Woo. Is it still kind of recalibrating after that incredible inner geek to match a heartbreaking loss for Amaru Moses, yeah. a scintillating win for Saul. And now it is going to be Saul facing Kevin Smets for a number one contender match. The winner gets a shot at Kalinowski for the inner geek to belt. But now our headlining match, Andrew, it's a whole mess of story going on. Yeah, I don't really actually know what's happening. Apparently, Ben Bateman is coming out with a teammate. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> it's not my me. My little ticker can't take it. I eat too much sausage for you to do that to my arteries. But what we do know is that he's got a teammate, and he's going up against Peggy Gummins and the Survivor. Ellis, I got to tell you, I pulled Ben aside. I had a conversation with him about our match. There's a couple things to pull away from this. Mm -hmm. One is the Den gets a win no matter what, right? That's right. Bateman, Gubbins, this is a great way to start building up the league and that's what I talked to Ben about after our match you saw I told you Sam gave me something to drink I blacked out for a couple days maybe even a week I'm back now I'm feeling great I talked to Ben and I told him we can't do that we need to build up the league we need to build up new competitors just like you guys gave us the opportunity to do half a decade ago and he's doing that today by bringing in a patron named Jeff? A guy. Look, I'm happy this guy's name is not that guy. <laughs> I am, whoever this Jeff person is, I'm told that they're very shy. And, and look, it, not everybody is a, you know, showman, is an entertainer, right. needs a desperate attention like I do. But when you look at Jeff, <laughs> apparently he's a patron of, yeah. of Ben's. So he's a supporter of Ben. He obviously knows Bateman. He knows what makes him tick. Maybe in some distant world, he can be somewhat of a complimentary player in the same way that you work with Ben. I love that you say that because that's exactly what I'm thinking. You already say Jeff is kind of a quieter guy. He's a little shy. Great. Let Bateman do the talking. But I'm sure, Ben, we all know all he wants to do is win, right? So I'm At sure any he, cost. At any cost. Burning bridges. Uh, he picks this one patron. Out yeah. of all the potential people that he could choose from, he picks this guy, Jeff. I feel like he's going to put himself in a great position today. They must complement each other, and Jeff needs to not worry about being a big character. Just get those answers right. And then as far as PG goes, I mean, we saw Peggy play very well in her yeah. rookie campaign, and now you pair her with the Survivor. It's sort of an unknown, but, I mean, look, with a name like the Survivor, you just keep hanging around. It tends to help you out here in the Schmodown. Maybe they can steal a victory from Bateman and Person. Yeah, I mean, again, you talk about <laughs> – <laughs> yes, whoever this is. You talk about if the If it's den, you, I swear to God. I am not getting up. I'm wearing sweatpants, so you don't got to worry about it. I can't, I can't stand up. You know, I'm wearing my sweatpants. I'm comfy, comfy, comfy mode right now. Someone's very happy about that. You have that. admirers in the crowd. <laughs> He's the real star of the Schmodown, and we're about to meet somebody very shy. So a whole lot of chaos, but we do know this. A team's match is headlining, and it should be a good one. You're ready to get going here, then we're going to kick it over to the golden voice of the pit boss, Ken Knapsack. Take us away, Ken. Ladies, gentlemen. And all of our friends around the world, it's time for the Movie Trivia Schmodown! <laughs> 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 
The following contest is scheduled for three rounds in the team's division. Introducing first, they are making their team's debut. This is P.G. Peggy Gubbins and her partner, The Survivor. to see it. I love those. Go. Now, apparently, those things on the biceps don't actually serve any function. I Not at all. I study in muscle and fitness, but the flare on the side of them really adds to the survivors overall. This is, uh, I'm intimidated slash impressed, and it's always a pleasure to see Peggy Gubbins up there. I gotta say, I love what I'm seeing here on the floor. Peggy Gubbins looks like she's ready to go, and the survivor looks like a guy I would not like to run into in an alley. <laughs> or maybe I would. Who knows what I'm looking for that day. Ken, who are they playing? And their opponents, making their team's debut, representing the dead and accompanied by their manager, Pink Mulligan. Ben, the boss, Baker. And from Ben's Patreon page, <laughs> this is Yes! Wow. Still seated, does Jeff live with my girlfriend in Narnia? This is yeah! It seems like Jeff is, uh, is Guys, very, my, very he's, shy. He just, he's a little shy. Can we get, his name's Jeff. Can we get a little, Jeff, 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 all right, so that is Ben Bateman's playing partner. Uh, Jeff is probably not used to a television studio, but uh, Kate Mulligan doing her job as a manager, Ben doing his job as a teammate, getting you Jeff, got this, Jeff to the desk where who knows what is going to come out of that person's mouth, if we're even going to be able to hear it. I, I mean, be, I have a lot of questions. Here. I am very confused here, Ellis. This does not look like a typical partner for Ben Bateman. You talk about who he's played with in the past, greatness here at the desk, but this guy, this uh, Jeff? Yeah. Does he know? Jeff? Does um, he know his own name? I, I guess we'll do a mic check with the very shy ski instructor at some point. In the meantime, uh, I'm going to go through the rules of round number one, and then we'll just see if we get lucky here. Please so we do. have our teams at the desk in round number one. Ten questions facing the field. It is a team's match, but round number one is an individual exercise of movie trivia knowledge. Each question is worth a point per player, two points per team. Fifteen seconds to write down that correct answer. In the entire match, you each have three repeats as a team through the three rounds. And so uh, I'm probably going to regret this. So let's start easy. Uh, Survivor, I saw you doing some party pumping with some bands there. Are yeah. you now uh, happy with your musculature and ready to participate? Yeah, absolutely. Survivor stays ready. Always got to get that pump in no matter where you He's are. He's not wrong, know. Ellis. You do want that pump. Uh, a frequent hotel room workouter, Andrew Guy. Uh, Peggy Gubbins, it, it's lovely to see you. I know you. Are you ready to play? Always ready. Let's go. All right. Um, just going in order here. Uh, Jeff, you, you, you were a patron of Ben Bateman, and now you find yourself next to him at the question podium. Are you ready to play in a movie trivia schmodown match? Oh, my God. Is he going to write his answer down? This is unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff, you're on it. All right. He's I'm ready. sorry. I'm sorry. He's, He's ready. ready. He's ready? It's okay, okay, Jeff. Yeah. Jeff, it's okay. <laughs> at some point, we're going to need you to verbalize your answers. Jeff's aware of that. Okay, Ben, are you ready to play? Can you kind of? I, I am ready. I just I wanted to say, Ellis, I'm excited to be here, and, and Peggy, this is going to be great. Thank you, and David. It's great to meet you in person. I, the FCL stuff I've seen is great. So let's. All right, you said it. you're excited to be here. I am excited. Well, to be that here. makes one of us. Um, Jeff, I. Uh, okay, I, I'll be honest with you, folks. I sometimes I'm in on some of the shenanigans here. I have no idea what's going on. I'm it's my job to ask questions. It's his job. I don't know if he's withholding information. We're going to play a movie trivia match, and maybe it's a good one. Yeah, I'm I don't gonna know. steal your line. The faster that we can get this started, the faster we can get this That's over my with. Guy right Ken Knapsack, please, God, help us. <laughs> Let's get ready to Shmoda! <laughs> All right, PG and the Survivor, Ben and Jeff. Yes, we are talking to you. Ten questions coming your way from all over the movie trivia universe, starting right here with Action Adventure. Who has directed all the films in the Kingsman series? 
to date. If he misses this, you just have to wonder what Ben is thinking. He doesn't talk. He doesn't answer questions correctly. Yeah, Who at, is this at guy? At one point, will Bateman regret his decision? Or maybe at what point will he say, I'm a genius, which I think Ben feels that way. Well, and also, you yeah. heard how Four, pleasant Bateman was three, when you asked him if he was ready two, to go. One, I've heard that song and dance before. Yes. Pens down, let's try the Survivor. Uh, Matthew Vaughn. That is the correct answer yeah. for the Survivor. And how about Peggy Govins? Didn't have it. Guess Kenneth Branagh. Didn't have it. Okay, and so now we go to Jeff. Matthew Vaughn. He said, he said Matthew Vaughn. Okay. Matthew. Gonna need to hear you a little bit louder, but we'll give you Matthew Vaughn. He wrote it down, Ben Bateman. I also said Matthew Vaughn. All right, and so Matthew Vaughn is correct, and team takes a two to one lead over team. I'm pretty sure he just whimpered when he showed his board. Yeah, I, I guess we're just gonna be translating. Um, okay. it, 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 I'm just gonna ask the question. Can you guys be a little more encouraging? Come on, Jeff, man. it's He's all right. He's trying man. his best. Got just take, take a breath, man. It's okay. okay. Well, we Thank do you. have a great Thank studio you. audience here tonight. Yeah. 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 Great. Yeah. Be encouraging. Also, let Jeff hear the question. Jeff, we're all in your corner. Your next question for the field is in the category of comic book movies, and it is. Which two actors returned to the role of Peter Parker alongside Tom Holland in 2021's Spider-Man No Way Home? Warning, this question comes with a minor spoiler alert. It does. Is that the order you do spoiler alerts? I think so. I think you say it afterwards. It's a retroactive. Yep, yep. Arachnid boy. I know you were not feeling. Uh, I just don't like multiverses. Yeah, I'm, man, I'm, I'm a one universe guy. I'm, I'm very simple. Five, four, three. Any other Mark else is running around Earth? Get back to Zorkon Four. Mm -hmm. Okay, pens down. Let's start with Ben Bateman. I had Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. All right, and how about let's have total silence for Jeff. Jeff, did you have the answer? Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire. Hey, okay. <laughs> We're coming out of our shell. How about Peggy Govins? Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield. Right. And Survivor, Survivor had Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire. All right. They switched up okay. the order a couple times, but we Everybody got three great. perfect rounds still available here. Question number three in the category of holiday films. What 1989 modern classic featuring Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Doris Roberts, and Brian Doyle Murray featured the line, I'm sorry, this is our family's first kidnapping? Uh, I remember mine. <laughs> it, it seems like yesterday, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really does. Yeah, then you just get used to it. And uh, speaking of kidnapping, kind of feel like my show has been hijacked from you. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I can't deny it. I mean, he's getting bigger chance than I've ever gotten in my career. You know, I, I'm going to try to change my tune. I love all of our patrons. So, so man, And yep. look, guy's still perfect. He is. He it, is. Or they are. Five, it four. Is. Three. Yeah, we don't want to get too specific. One, pens down. Let's try Peggy Govins first. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Oh, she got the National Lampoon in there, too. How about the Survivor? National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. How about Jeff? Did you have it? National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. And Ben Bateman. Uh, yeah, I wrote National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. There it is. Okay. National Lampoon's in tiny letters, Christmas Vacation in big ones. Way to go. Bateman, your next question is in the category of remakes and reboots, like season nine itself. Here it is. What 2002 film starring Adam Sandler, Winona Ryder, and John Turturro is a remake of a 1936 Frank Capra film? Wow, they made movies back then. Uh, they were called Talkies mm. or Talking Pictures. If you recall, season one of this show was the Talking Picture Schmodown. Oh, I do remember that. It was all kind of brown. Presented you know? by RKO Pictures. Isn't that right, Ken? One of the favorite shows you'll see this week. <laughs> you do a pretty good nap sock. Five, <laughs> four, three, two. One pens down, and let's go to Ben Bateman. Mr. Deeds. Is correct. How about your patron, Jeff? Mr. Deeds. And you got it, and Peggy Gubbins. Mr. Deeds. Got it, and the survivor. Mr. Deeds. All right. All right. I mean, these guys are humming along right now. Peggy Gubbins, she misses the first question. She finds her footing. That's That happens when it's your first time in studio. I love what we're seeing so far. Question number five, category of famous actors and actresses. What actor appeared in the following three films? Down with Love, Salmon Fishing in the Yemen, and Angels and Demons. I uh, should note that we had three competitors here get their very first points in a live studio match. That here is today. true. Survivor, PG, and Pepe. Jeff. Jeff, whatever we're calling Five, him. four, three, He's nervously two. Nervously writing. One, pens down, and let's try the Survivor. I said Paul Bettany. Is... Incorrect. How about Peggy? Ewan McGregor. That is correct. Mm. Jeff, okay. over to you. There you go. You should flip it. Flip it. Ewan McGregor. Just like you've been doing. Yeah. Doing great, Jeff. How about you, Ben? I had you. All right. 
Ewan McGregor it is, and so now it's a two-point lead here for Ben's team, and we go to your next category, which is, thank God, comedy. <laughs> <laughs> I think I heard a little giggle out of Jeff, too. I think so. I think we got it's a so. joke. Everybody laughs. A little giggle out of Jeff. No, All right. not. They they're not laughing at you. They're not laughing at you. Oh, no. Yeah, not laughing, laughing at you, at you Jeff. This is the most sympathetic studio audience yeah. we've Jeff, ever had. Jeff, Jeff, no, Jeff, there you go. Jeff, 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 Jeff. I don't know that the competitors ever gotten more love. Thank you, thank you. Now God. we go to the question inside this category, and it is, of the following actors who did not appear in the film 22 Jump Street, Wyatt Russell, Peter Stormare, Jake Johnson, or Dave Franco? You like the... Uh the Jump Street films? I like the Jump Street so much. I was the probably the only person on board when there was a rumored crossover between the Jump Streets and the Men in Black franchise. Oh, yeah. Give I remember people me talking that. about that. That'd be fun. Then throw some Jurassic Park in there. <laughs> okay, now we're getting Put a little Put Vin wild. Diesel in the movie. Uh-huh. Jar Jar pops up. I'm listening. That's a go <laughs> picture from Ken. <laughs> Survivor needs a repeat. All right, Survivor gets a repeat. And the question in the category of comedy, of the following actors who did not appear in 22 Jump Street, Wyatt Russell, Peter Stormare, Jake Johnson, or Dave Franco? All right, Russell, I don't know if you saw my tweet. He looks exactly like that guy from North Carolina. You mean every guy from North Carolina? Yeah, that's fair. Oh, that's oh, fair. Uh, the, uh, the the basketball player. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the good one. Yeah, he, he looks like he's north of the wall. <laughs> yeah. you know? It's a movie show, guys, not a sport. Five, okay, Ben. Four, three. I think your plate is full today. I'm just mm -hmm. having fun. Two, yeah. one. Pens down, and let's see how much fun your partner is having, Jeff, to continue a perfect round. Wow. Yeah, it's for you. Clip it. Jake Johnson. Jake Johnson is correct. Yeah. Ben Bateman. You know, I also wrote Jake Johnson. All right, so they are team perfection as of the moment. How about the survivor? I also have Jake Johnson. Use it the repeat and uses it wisely, Great Peggy. Job. Jake Johnson. All right. Let's go. Let's go. It is 12 to 10, still a two-point lead go. for Ben and Jeff. Question number seven coming in the category of fantasy sci-fi. What fantasy character created by Robert E. Howard has been played by both Jason Momoa and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Hmm. I wonder if I have the physique to do that. I don't think I, so. I was going to say, <laughs> it's not like we did an audition. Yeah, I mean, I definitely threw my hat in the ring. We showed up, I flexed my calves, and they were like, let's see the rest of you. And I was mm -hmm. like, no thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I've got just one strong looking forearm. That's all I've got. I've seen it, folks. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Pens know. down, pens down, pens down. And we're going to go to Jeff. He's my favorite, Conan the Barbarian. Okay, there we go, there's the personality. Let's wow. go to Ben Bateman. Conan. Uh, that it, We will accept the character Conan, uh, the survivor. All right, uh, Survivor actually has worked out with these men. It's Conan the Barbarian. Wow. All right. Yeah, I was gonna say, Survivor, maybe I could consider Peggy. Not Craig, but Conan the Barbarian. That is correct, all right, so. Can you challenge that? All around, uh, Peggy and the survivor having a discussion here. Seems like they're gonna hang on to that challenge. That's just probably the best case. idea. I would say so. We move on to your next category, which is horror movies. And the question, Damien Bashir and Taisa Farmiga appear in what film in the Conjuring franchise that was directed by Corin Hardy? Damien Bashir is a cool name. Yeah, I like, like that a, a lot. cool guy. He could be a spy with that name. It looks good on the top of a movie poster. Oh. You know? Yeah. As he does. Found the right career. Andrew Guy. I'd pay to see a movie. Yeah. Andrew Guy, Jason Statham. <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> I don't the know. Mystery Jason. of Jeff. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. Pens down. And let's go to the survivor. Uh, the devil made me do it. Is incorrect. How about Peggy? I guessed Annabelle. Also incorrect. <laughs> There's a lot of movies in this franchise. Yes, there Jeff. Are. Is it the nun? Wow. It is the nun. Wow. Ben Bateman, did you yeah. have it? Round of applause for Jeff, did guys. You, uh, you have the answer, Ben. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I wrote the nun. Okay, Ben okay. got it too. And so, look, it, it's a it's a curveball. You might even say it's a fork ball or a screwball that we were throwing here at the answer desk. But as of this moment, Ben Bateman and Jeff are both perfect in round number one. Two questions remain. Yeah, 16 to 12. And Jeff, you just keep turning around that board. You don't need to ask every single time. Question number nine, coming to the category of biopics. The film Love and Mercy, which stars both Paul Dano and John Cusack as Brian Wilson, follows the co-founder and leader of what famous rock band? 
Yeah, you know, it, we should point out, it's not really any of this vitriol that you might detect up here. It's not at Jeff the person. No, no not it's at just all. That it's just that it was a surprise. Yeah, and it still is a surprise. It's almost more at Ben for it, putting us in this position. At least from it's my It's not point hard of view. to manufacture disdain for Ben Bates. No, sir, it's not. You gotta give five, back your patrons. Four. You guys know that? Three. Two. I can't tell what's going on. Repeat, One, please. Thanks. Uh, you got it just in the nick of time, and that is your All second right. repeat. Okay. Okay. Do what you gotta do. Here we go. Question number nine in the category of biopics. The film Love and Mercy, which stars both Paul Dano and John Cusack as Brian Wilson, oh. follows the co founder and leader of what famous rock band? No piece of strategy here. I yeah. was talking to someone about this the other day. I actually think that using two repeats in round one, if you get points from it, is okay because in round two, you shouldn't need it. You have two people working together to hear the question. You should only need that repeat if you Five, need more time. Four, three, you got one remaining for yep. that last one. Two. Got to save it for round three. One, pens down, and let's go to Ben Bateman. God only knows the beach boys. Oh, he does have a good singing voice, doesn't he? Do uh, Jeff. I like to surf the beach boys. <laughs> Uh, Better than my answer. Would have fooled me. Let's go to Peggy Govins. The Beach Boys. And God only knows what the survivor wrote. <laughs> survivor wrote the Beach Boys. There it is. There it is. Right. Nice. 14-18. Nice yeah. That's right. Don't worry, baby. Okay. Only one more question in round number one, and that is in the category of thrillers. Here's the question, and it's for a perfect round for Ben and Jeff. What 2000s thriller featuring Robert Downey Jr. and Jake Gyllenhaal follows the real-life investigation of a serial killer in Northern California. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. What tier do you think Jeff is of Ben's patron? Oh, that's a good question. Pretty I high number. I hope he's the highest tier. You would think that's a monthly premium you're paying to be in To just the, be in the show. Yeah, in our studios here in Wisconsin. That is Five, not guaranteed, four, by the way. Three. Two, you're a member, Ellis. You should one. know. <laughs> Let's go to uh, the survivor. Zodiac. Is correct. Peggy, did you have it? Did. Zodiac. She did. And yeah. Jeff, for a perfect round in your very first showdown. Way to go. Did I do it, Zodiac? He got wow. a perfect round. Look at that. Congratulations, Jeff. And Ben also with a perfect round. No news there. Ellis, 20 to 16. It took me five years to get my first perfect round. <laughs> five years and a changing of the question writers. This. Never mind. Hey, That's you know what? I had a perfect match, and I still lost. So a lot of things <laughs> can happen in the Schmodown. But here we are with a bonus question that is going to be asked just to Team Ben and Jeff, although you are still answering this question individually. So, Jeff, just the way you have been doing it is great. Write down your best attempt at an answer. You can't rely on Ben. Ben, you can't rely on Jeff just yet. Andrew Edge, you're ready. Your question, the bonus question, which of the following actors did not appear in the 2005 version of The Producers? Andrew and Martin. Will Ferrell, Joan Cusack, or John Lovitz? That's a good question. Yeah, that's a good question. John Lovitz, a guy that uh, he was really popular when we were, I was growing up. Yeah, so yeah. He just kind of disappeared. I'm not that much older than you. Well, I just wanted to qualify. I Five, you know, four. I'm know. counting you down now. Three, <laughs> two, one. Dad, do you remember John Lovitz? <laughs> Ben's down. Let's go to Ben Bateman first. I tried Lovitz. You did try Lovitz. That is incorrect. Let's see if Jeff can actually take a lead on his teammate. I mean, this is... Go I'm ahead, Jeff. Up. I said John Lovitz. Oh, wow. he can't do it. All right. So okay. Jeff is mortal, everyone. Jeff has missed his first. Jeff, it's okay. I'm very upset. Okay, well, we'll let them pick up the pieces of their fallen kingdom here after round number one. As we head into round number two, this is the wheel round. What was each the answer? Gets a spin. Oh, we were looking for Joan Cusack. My apologies. Uh, the wheel round is each competitor gets a spin. Five questions asked in total. The questions are each worth two points. Unless you need multiple choice, keep in mind stealing is available in round two. And so, Ben and Jeff, you lead by four. Would you like to spin the wheel first or defer to your opponents? I usually like to defer. That's what I usually like. Yeah? You are okay with that? Yeah. Okay. We're going to defer to these guys. Okay. All right. The survivor okay. is going to have his first spin at a real wheel, and there it goes. Yeah. Look at those guns, Ellis. Fun like a pro. Round and round it goes. And it lands on Steven Spielberg. All right. You know, I've been asking for a movie trivia showdown tank top for seven years. Yeah. He got this guy one walks in one. in his first match. He, he made it. Yeah. I need to talk to human resources. One thing that's interesting about this wheel round, guys, is you know Ben. Spin again. You don't know Jack. You're going to spin again. Yeah. not know what his strengths are. They're spinning again. Peggy's going to give it a whirl. Yeah. Peggy's going to give it a whirl. And that is Peggy Gubbins. First spin at a real wheel. Peggy Gubbins notoriously beat Paige for Freddy. 
who beat Ben Jennifer Bateman. Aniston. Yeah. Jennifer yeah. Aniston it is. And so here we go with our two friends, Peggy Gubbins and The Survivor. Peggy Gubbins, The Survivor, five questions coming your way. Remember, you do have one repeat left, and you can check down to multiple choice. We're going to start right here, category of Jennifer Aniston. What Oscar-winning actress plays Rita Mosley, Jennifer Aniston's mother, in 1997's Picture Perfect? That'd be Olympia Dukakis. What a great pull there to start round number two, 18 to 20. Correct, they have the lead. Question number two. In 2004's Along Came Polly, what kind of animal does Jennifer Aniston's Polly Prince keep as a pet? Rest in peace to the great Phil Hoffman. Funny, funny that. Yeah. Five, four, Three? Ferret. That is correct. Two more points. All right, so they have the lead with their first question. Now they tie the lead with their second one. They can look to take the lead here. Yeah, I mean, they could have been down by six going into round number two, but that double miss on the bonus yep. gives us a tie score here. Question number three, Jennifer Aniston. 2006's The Breakup, starring Jennifer Aniston and Vince Vaughn, was directed by which MCU director? young team working very well together. They seem great. They seem like they're covering each other's bases. They're taking their time. Five, four, okay. three. We're going to check down multiple, multiple choice. choice. Right. Sure. I can do that. Is it A, John Favreau, B, Joe Johnston, C, Peyton Reed, or D, John Watts? Let's go for it. Peyton Reed. That is correct for another point. 21 to 20. You, got it. You, got it. you can hear them. Wishing that they had just gone for it, but it's sometimes better to play safe, Ellis. Yeah, I mean, you want to make sure you get the points and don't give away any steal opportunities, especially to a team as formidable as what we saw in round one from Ben and Jeff. Moving on through Jennifer Aniston, what 2011 rom-com featuring supporting performances from Keegan-Michael Key, Minka Kelly, and Kevin Nealon is a remake of the 1969 film Cactus Flower? Five, four, yeah. right. Let's go check multiple them. choice. Yeah. Right. Sure. Is it A, We're the Millers, B, Love Happens, C, Just Go With It, or D, She's Funny That Way? They have one repeat remaining. They don't want to burn it if they can save it. They're a newer team, so you wonder how they're going to navigate mm -hmm. that strategy. Can we get a repeat of the, repeat the options? options? The one free repeat of the options. Here we go. Is it A, We're the Millers? B, love happens, C, just go with it, and D, she's funny that way. I love the way they're navigating this, Ellis. Doing a great job. I'm going to say just go with it. That is correct again. Another big point there for PG and the Survivor. Now really up by two. Great maneuvering there because you use hints. You know Adam Sandler's a star. You hear the name Kevin Nealon. He's in a lot of Sandler films. Really well sorted out there by Gubbins and the Survivor. Your final question in the category of Jennifer Aniston. In 2006's Friends with Money, what Oscar award winning actress plays fashion designer Jane, who is unhappy about growing old? It's all of us, Jane. No, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 Uh, multiple choice. Sure. Is it A, Katherine Keener, B, Julia Roberts, C, Joan Cusack, or D, Francis McDormand? I'm going to go with A. Katherine Keener is incorrect. Mm. Now for a steal opportunity, Ben and Jeff. Uh, ben, you can tell Jeff how this works. Please let me finish reading the question and the options. Category is Jennifer Aniston. In 2006's Friends with Money, what Oscar award winning actress plays fashion designer Jane, who is unhappy about growing old? Is it A, Katherine Keener, B, Julia Roberts, C, Joan Cusack, or D, Francis McDormand? No. Uh, all right. That's all right. It's all good. Um, Jeff seems to be apologizing yeah. for not knowing the answer. Ben might be on his own on this one. They said. Need an answer in five, mm -hmm. four, three, two. Francis McDormand. That is correct for a big one point steal and a two point it was, it was swing, Alice. That's right. Look at this score 22 to 21. Childress to Duncan. And now it is Ben who and. Jeff are going to be walking over to the wheel to give it a spin. Does Jeff yeah. get to touch well, the wheel? I don't know if he has it's enough strength to spin no. the wheel. Yeah. Come on. 
Does he have? Does he have to go? He doesn't have to. He does not have to approach if he doesn't want to. But you know, the motherly instincts of Kate Mulligan really taking over here. Yeah. So th there is still a lot of confusion as to what exactly is going on. And 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 Jeff is a person. I no idea. Nice, mean. Is he shy. a vampire? Like, I, I don't know. A powder. I don't know what he is, but Kate is probably the right manager for this situation. I actually think that's a yeah, really, really great way to put yeah. it, Ellis. Yeah. So it is going to be Ben spinning the wheel. He's a pro. He's used to this. I can't imagine what Gucci would do to poor Jeff. I'm glad we don't have to envision that scenario. But you know, with how well Jeff is playing, he may be a sought-after competitor <laughs> next season. That's a good point. Sports, sports movies. Films. And so we'll see if uh, sports... Jeff's walking away. Oh, he thought he had to play sports. Yeah, yeah. No, it's not actually. More mental athletics here. Uh, they're going to spin again, and Jeff is going to spin the wheel. Uh, all right, again, we were not preventing Jeff from spinning. No, we did not. <laughs> I want to point that not out. Not bad. Yep. Not a bad spin. The, all right, so Jeff now excited. Newman and Redford. Newman and Redford. All right. Again, we know the strengths of Ben Bateman pretty well. Yeah. He's played in the league for a long time. We have no idea how Jeff is going to maneuver this category. Well, we do know that uh, Paul Newman and Robert Redford work pretty well together, and Ben and Jeff sort of walking really in do. their shadow a little bit here today. As they get back up to the question podium, we here at the Answer Desk have five questions in the world of Redford and Newman. Your first one worth two points. Here it is. For the lead, Paul Newman appears as Dodge Blake in what 1990s romantic drama alongside Robin Wright and Kevin Costner? You agree? Okay. Message in a bottle. Better movie than a police tune. That is correct for two points, and now it's 23 yeah. to 22. The lead is once again in the possession of Ben and his patron, Jeff. Your next question for two more points. Which famous comedian co-stars with Newman as Minnesota Fats in The Hustler? Great name. One of my favorite film names. Great movie. Yeah. Comedian? All right. I'm going to count you down here in five, four, Multiple choice maybe? three, no. two. Jackie Gleason. Jackie Gleason is correct. Okay. Two more points. They increase their lead to three, and we head to question three in round two. For Jeff and Ben, here it is. Paul Newman played what famous real-life gunfighter in the 1958 Western, The Left-Handed Gun? Billy the Kid. William H. Bonney, alias Billy the Kid. Wow. That is correct <laughs> for two more points. And the two young guns up here at the question podium have a perfect round two thus far. And it is now their penultimate question in the category of Paul Newman and Robert Redford, two actors of note. And your question. of a nine-point lead here at the end of round two, Ellis. Two more points. Here we go. Who directed Paul Newman in the 1982 courtroom drama, The Verdict? You should say this one. Yeah. You just you project, though. They have to be able to hear Okay. You. Need an answer five. Sydney Lumet! Is he falling? <laughs> He said Sidney Lumet. I Sydney believe Lumet. that's what I heard, and Ben ratifies it. So okay. that is a correct nice. answer. It is Sidney Lumet. The verdict is two more points. And, and even pegging the survivor, giving it up for, uh, I mean, you know what? I'm excited about Jeff. He's playing great today. So congratulations, Jeff. One question remaining here in round at number two, and it is for two points. Who plays Doyle Lonigan? the target of an elaborate con put on by Paul Newman and Robert Redford's characters in 1973's The Sting. We're gonna go Robert Shaw. Great actor and a great question answer because it's correct. 31 to 22 wow. and Ben and Jeff have Shocked the world. Not because we know Ben Bateman's great, but Jeff, no idea going in, but we know a little something about Jeff, or at least how well Jeff plays movie trivia because they are working well as a team and as individuals, and it all adds up to a nine-point lead as we careen into round number three, the round that will determine the match. Here's how it works. Ten total points available to each team in the form of three questions. These questions increase in difficulty and point value. Two points for the first one, three points for the next one, and five points for your final question. No stealing in round number three. And so now we need a series of numbers. Could be an adventure here. Um, we are going to go to Ben and Jeff first for your lucky numbers. These numbers can range from 1 to 20. These are the numbers that we will derive your mystery categories from. 
Uh, ben, you usually have a custom set of numbers that you select. Do you want to go with 3, 7, and 17? <laughs> You know me so well, Ellis. Uh, no, we're not going to. I'm going to go okay. with. Wow. I'm going to go with three. Do you have a number you want to pick? Four. Four. <laughs> number four. And then, and then for our last number, we're going to go seven. So three, four, seven. I had two out of three. Yeah. You did. Come on. You did. All right. Good job. Three, four, and seven in that order. And now we go over to PG and TS. We're going to go with five, nine, and eighteen. Five, nine, and 18 it is. And Andrew, their backs are against the wall, but we know the kind of fighter that Peggy, and we can see the kind of fighter the survivor is. And so they do have a chance to avoid the TKO here, but they got to catch fire in a hurry. Any question missed by them in this round, and the match is going to be awarded to Ben and his patron, Jeff. So what are we looking at for category number five? I'm just, well, I'm two just points around. is a great way to start your round three, obviously. We're going to go to Oscars for your choice of number five PG or the survivor who would like to take Oscars for two points well, the rock paper scissors <laughs> could be here all night could be here all night keep going it's a confident team it's a confident team wow all right I'll take it come on Peggy oh, Gummett's right. gonna fall on the sword or the scissors if you will that's right Peggy fielding the two-point question again the category is Oscar movies and just a reminder that uh, PG and the survivor you have one repeat remaining Ben and Jeff you still have all three of yours great thank you all right, PG in the category of Oscar movies for two points. Clint Good. Eastwood yeah. and Hilary Swank both won Academy Awards for what 2004 boxing film? Million Dollar Baby. They're still alive, Ellis. Two still points, got it. narrowing that gap. Still got it. And so now we are going to stick with Peggy and The for your three-point question, which is now going to be fielded alone by The Survivor. You guys selected number nine, which is going to take us over to the category of Harrison Ford for three points. You'll find the characters of Hail Caesar, Lee Christmas, and Conrad Stonebanks in what 2010s action film featuring Harrison Ford and Antonio Banderas? Three, two. You get a repeat, please. Final repeat has been used for three points in the category of Harrison Ford. You'll find the characters of Hail Caesar, Lee Christmas, and Conrad Stonebanks in what 2010s action film featuring Harrison Ford and Antonio Banderas? All comes down to this. Counting down in five, four. Three. The Man. Expendables 2. And your winner by technical knockout, Ben! And Ben! I heard this survivor say it. He said Expendables 3 afterwards. Yeah, it, it's one of those sequel questions where it's like there's so many stars in all those movies. And in the 2 and 3, it was the Expendables 3. But a well-played ball game there by Survivor and PG. Uh, nice debut for them, but that is not the story. The story is Jeff, who's now walking over to congratulate Great. the Great. opponents Great. and Ben Bateman Great. there, Great. along Great. with his patron and manager, Kate, and, and a nice moment there between Kate and Peggy. And so now, I mean, <laughs> Andrew, do you want to go ahead and put this all into a bow for us? I just don't understand how Ben Bateman already seems to have a microphone. A great performance here. Jeff did not miss a question other yeah. than the bonus. Neither did Ben Bateman. But Sorry, I'm actually just going to really quick wrap. <laughs> Um, you know, before this, we offered Peggy a spot on the den, and that was never real. Oh. 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 Really? Oh. Really? Oh. <laughs> she fell for it. She fell for it. Oh, they did great. They did great. Shut up. Oh, no. Ben Bateman has poisoned the well at the den, Ellis. Hey, 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 idiots, shut your mouths. Uh, guys, that was a great time. I had a really good time. I mean, you guys did great in round two. Those were some hard questions. Uh, look. <laughs> Despicable and poor here. Jeff has never competed, but no, maybe never been on it's camera. Okay, Jeff, it's okay, Jeff. It's okay. You did really well. My partner Jeff did a uh, great job today. Okay. Uh, you know, you know, he was just a terrific seat. player, and you may know. Wait, him. wait a minute! Oh. Wait a minute! Oh. Come on! Come on! Danger zone! The 
This is unbelievable, Ellis. This is despicable, unbelievable, disgusting, and this is uncharacteristic of Dan Merle. This is a stain on the legacy of the great Dan Merle. Look, the guy has oh. been a pillar of the Schmodown since the Schmodown has been the Schmodown. And now, again, you talk about Bateman poisoning the well with the den. That okay. appears to have gone to his manager and now to a beloved figure in the league. Let's and I don't know what the down. future holds for Dan Merle, but I am disappointed in this turn of events. Wait, hold on. Hey, you hold okay on. there, Jeff? You doing okay? Oh, I'm so scared. <laughs> oh. This is not the Dan Merle that we know and love. No. Um, you know. The fact that Dan Merle is a patron of Ben Bateman is the least of the surprises <laughs> here tonight. It is that Listen, he's is Ellis, quite shut your mouth. Shut you out for a second. Uh, Are you? That's that will be You're handled. All patrons. Here. You're all patrons of me. Okay. <laughs> uh, not no, uh, no, 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 no. Listen, everybody. I got the fans out there. Danger Zone, such a disappointment. Oh, we thought they'd play better. They should break up. Every Harloff said, oh, they should break. Oh, super team. Yeah, we are a super team. You fed us to the beast last year, and I'm not talking about <laughs> William Bibiani. He's more like a little cub. I'm talking about the beast of the Schmodown. Every top team, they threw us at them. We still have a winning record, and... You people have the gall to believe we're just going to break up? Wait, so Danger Zone is not breaking up? Are you slow? Did you just see what happened? <laughs> to Ellis, this means that they I... get a number one contenders match. This means uh -oh. that... They said to Kaiser, if Danger Zone did not break up, they would get a number one contenders match, and they have one for the den. Look, hey, Andrew, why don't you ask yourself this question? Who would I rather have as my teammate? Peggy Gubbins or the greatest player to ever walk this earth? You're ask yourself that question. This is a lot to unpack for the yeah, fans, right. for the studio audience, for both the teams up there. And, and look, the, the bottom line is going to be this, is that now... Oh, uh, look who's here. Saul's entering the picture now. Oh, Saul consoling Peggy. Peggy, um, heartbroken over... I mean, look at this. And, and Kate Morgan, it, it, it doesn't look like she's affected in the slightest. Oh, yeah. Now the crowd chanting PG when they were chanting You were chanting Jeff my so name long. five minutes ago. You're yeah. the easiest crowd Jeff to win over in the world. Jeff is not Dan Merle's name. And oh. unlike anything going on in the den right now, unfortunately, we, as honest, truthful people, do have to honor the commitment that was made to Danger Zone. That is the team under false pretenses, though it may be. And they have won and earned a number one contender. I, I, first of all, I don't know who this Dan Merle is. This is a guy that everyone has looked up to for so long, and now he has gone to the dark side. And like you said, they are honoring their agreement, but still betraying John Kaiser and the fact that he built this team. All right. Oh, yeah, he built this team. <laughs> he built this team. <laughs> yeah, right. you, you guys have the mic. He to was you. lucky to have this team. Have any... Jefferson Starship built this city on rock and roll? Come on. <laughs> nice reference, Kate. Yeah. Thank you. Do you have any Kate. closing words we'll before talk, we turn okay. it over let's, to Jensen? Let's get out of here. Guys, right. let's get out of here. They're we can let these guys do their thing. Uh, Saul's confronting Ben Bateman right now. Hey, hey, gentlemen. Gentlemen. Get physical. Christian's going to get involved here. Get your hands up. Do you think I'm just a guy? Do you think I'm just a guy like this? Hey, hey. So, all right. this is all right. 2017 Schmodown yeah, coming back is, to uh, life here. This is a lot of shenanigans. Come on, Jeff. Uh, apparently, cooler heads have finally prevailed. And now up here at the answer desk, it is up to us to kind of unpack some of this situation here. And so, look, it was Danger Zone. It was Dan Merle pretending to be Jeff, garnering sympathy. And now we're left with the pieces of a well-played match by Ben and Dan Merle. And they are Danger Zone. They will advance to a number one contender match. But I think that the winners tonight aren't really Ben and Merle as much no. as it is the Survivor and Peggy Gubbins for playing a fair and honest match. And being good human beings. Thanks. Absolutely. Let's get this interview over with as fast as we possibly can. We've all heard from Danger Zone before. Saul intervening, protecting his friend, his team. Jen, please help us out here. Go ahead and talk to Danger Zone. Jen Sturger, have at it. Hey, guys, I would um, I'd love to give you an interview, but uh, Danger Zone, I just kind of walked off the set, so I don't think that this is... I don't think this is happening today. I'm sorry, guys. Do my best. No surprise here, Ellis. Yeah, we are uh, not going to have an interview with Danger Zone, as it turns out, because... Uh, I guess like the, the cowards that they acted like on the main stage and they said all they had to and so they're not going to be confronted or at least even grace Jennifer Sturger with it. You know what? Better for Jen Sturger. Let's just go over to a team that I think did curry a lot of favor here today. 
Peggy Gubbins and the Survivor with Jen Sturgeon. So that was a shocking turn of events out there. Uh, end result withstanding. That was a great first match for you, for you two playing together. Your great first match ever in the MTS. Yeah. You have to be feeling pretty great about that. Um, especially when it's revealed that it was against the legendary Dan Merle and Ben Bateman. Like, come on, oh, Peggy, I'm so sorry. Sorry, I, just, I did not see that coming for Kate to betray me not once, but twice. I, I, I just don't know how I could have fallen for it. Please don't beat yourself up over that. Um, she tends to be really good at these type of things, apparently. Uh, but Survivor, like I said, really impressive first time out there. How did it feel to be under the lights? Oh, it felt amazing. As you can see, the Survivor thrives in a studio environment. He needs the energy from the people, and he, he, he should have had that question. But you know what? It's fine. I had, had a great partner. We actually made it all the way through to round three, apparently with some shenanigans playing from them, you know, a little bit of sabotage. You know, I feel like we should probably file some kind of complaint. I don't know. Um, I don't think that that's how that works around here, unfortunately. <laughs> but <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> okay. Well, all I got to say is great moments bring about great opportunity. And that's exactly what we had today. We had a great opportunity to showcase our talent in front of this live studio crowd. And Peggy showed that she does belong in this league. And, and I'll say this right now, that Kate yeah, doesn't know what she's missing without a player like this. Saul, I saw you you jump in at the end, obviously. Um, Ex-member of the Den, you obviously know what it feels like to be betrayed by Kate. What's going through your head there at the end? We saw you confront Bateman. Um, violence is never the answer, especially when <laughs> this is an expensive studio. That was implied violence. That's not violence. I've told you, I've told <laughs> lawyers and prosecutors that, you know, I didn't touch them, sort of, for the most part. But the point is this. I gave them... A opportunity to do the right thing. That seems to be a thread with me, doing the right thing around here, and they fail to do so. Actions have consequences. And you know what? Saul's show is a solo act from now on, but I'm gonna be here. I'm gonna be around. I don't like bullies. I don't like mouthy people. I don't like people full of themselves. And maybe I just show up because no one can pull my leash anymore. And maybe I just sort some people out. Yeah. Maybe I just show up and I get around. Let's see how people act when they know I'm gonna be here. And if Peggy Gubbins needs me, or even if she doesn't, I'm probably gonna end up bothering her for the rest of her career. <laughs> and I'm here, and there's a lot of people I owe. I got a big debt. I owe debts to Rachel Silverstrini. I owe debts to Lacey Gillerin and Thomas Harper, who's still lost, but he's still my friend. And you know what? I guess I'm the ghost of Tom Joad, and I'm just gonna be roaming around here like a friggin' wolf, sorting people out as I see fit. This is what a solo gorilla looks like, out of his cage, running around, beating his chest. Everyone, see you soon. Mr. Titan is gonna be here. Well, tough loss today, Peggy, but it's great to have you here in studio. And I hope, like I said, end result withstanding that you had a blast underneath these lights because you belong here. Oh, I had fun and the Kate News shocked me, but it's only gonna give me more drive now. I love that. I love that. Tough loss today, guys. I'll see you again soon. Back to the desk. Uh, I mean, a, a lot of emotions running high here and, and tempers flaring and a whole lot of stuff that, you know, you'd rather not see in our nice, I still call it the new studio here, but that's the way it goes sometimes at the Schmodown. Chaos does ramp at the end of the day. I mean, that's why we're up here is to sort of get order back. I just can't believe what we saw out of Dan Merle. Now, he's a guy that we have all respected for so long out there. The fact that he would come out and do this to the den, uh, I guess, with the den more so, to Peggy Gubbins, it's despicable behavior. I'm disgusted by it. And he's a guy that I think, honestly, is going to be falling from grace with doing things like that. Uh, can I tell you something I've never told you before? What's that? I'm glad you beat him a few years ago. Me too. But now now Feels I'm finally good. happy that you fell Dan Merle, as Santa Claus almost did once upon a time. And so that's going to do it uh, for a, a very memorable, if nothing else, episode of Friday Night Titans. And keep in mind, we did have a great undercard as well. Amaru we Moses played well, but it was Saul taking the win. And Saul next week on this very show is going to be taking on Kevin the Smasher Smets. Speaking of number one contender opportunities, yeah. that's what that match is in the inner geekdom because the winner is going to go on to face Mike Kalinowski in five rounds for the belt at the end of May. That will do it for all of the teams 
the managers, the fake outs, the misdirects, the zigs, the zags. That is Andrew Guy, Christian, the chairman, Harloff, our incredibly hardworking crew here at Skybound. Ken Knapsack, I and Mili Markell is saying we did our best. She <laughs> cried. She cried. She cried. My name is Jeff. Dan. Dan. They bought it. Ben. Oh, hey, hey, hey. What's up, what's, Jay? What's, what's going you, on? Man? What's you, up, buddy? you didn't talk to Jen. I mean, yeah. on, you can at least talk to me. What's What's going on? I can at least talk to you, Frank. No, I'm, gl I'm glad. I'm glad that we. Uh, I'm glad you caught up with me because I did. I did want to talk to you. Um, I want to let you know something. This is like a breaking news. Like yeah, an exclusive. Yeah. Um, some night soon, um, I'm gonna come to your house and I'm gonna take your show. And I'm gonna take your show to the dump, and I'm gonna bury it there with your other garbage takes, because that's where it belongs. Because I watch your show. I watch it. it, it you know, it's cute. Whatever. Whatever p passes the time. But I've noticed that like you, know, you get clicks because you're like, oh, the new goat, the new goat. Any Adam Marisol Levine that walks in off the street, it's the new goat. Six total championships, 14 championship wins. I guess I guess that's not enough. Not enough for you, and apparently it's not enough for you because I see what you say as well. So here's what's gonna happen. Uh, ben and I are gonna win. And then I'm gonna keep winning, and then there's not gonna be anything to talk about, and it's gonna be you and Happy Gilmore exchanging hair care tips. So that's the future of your show. Also, 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 Frankie, you sniveling little weasel. I'm so glad that 24 hours where I had to pretend to be nice to you is over. Listen, buddy, the degenerate Saul and Peggy, they're done. Okay, they have no place on the den. This is the future of the den. Suck on it, <laughs> Janice. Don't you know? Boss has always got a plan. Yeah. Always. <laughs> oh, you no. gotta be kidding me. Oh, it oh, is. The failure of a manager. At least he knows his uh. name. <laughs> I set this deal up. You didn't set it up. And you're gonna betray me? From Mulligan? <laughs> oh, he's legit mad. Dan, I would expect it from a louse like baby. Hey, they're not worth it, man. For you, it's Dan. It's not worth it. They're not we worth built it. something with Danger Zone, man! They're not worth it, man. They're not worth it. He's gonna be thirsty. They're not worth it. He's got water. Look at it. Hey, Dan! You were my hero, man. Looks like it's time to find some new heroes. <laughs> that was a little weird. That was weird. <laughs> Stay hydrated, guys. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what's going on anymore. I, that's the show?